Good morning, it's a delight to be here. Wonderful program, um, many accolades to the program uh, coordinators as well as our awesome moderators here. Uh, so I'd like to give you uh, just a brief overview. I, I wish that there was more um, in-depth data, but uh, as Dr. Sands noted, there's, there's great religion when, when we're doing the anastomosis in the OR, uh, both in terms of belief and in hopes and prayers following. So. Uh, when you when you try to even just wrap your your head around you know what are the different options out there it's a bit like you ordered your coffee this morning if you stopped at Starbucks there's so many different options um, there's even different uh, you know sugar or or sugar substitutes it's like it's you can't even get black coffee anymore people look at you like you're absurd um, so. Let's, uh, and we're just gonna ignore the left colon and the low pelvic um, anastomosis because the right colon in and of itself is, is rather complicated when you, when you approach it. Uh, so uh, Dr. Karan nicely um, outlined more data, but really just to say, uh, sufficient to say that we don't have much uh, data saying that stapled versus um, hand-sewn is any better. My own personal practice is I prefer hand-sewn um, for any patient who's anticoagulated, uh, I feel like there's less bleeding, although I'm not sure that's true. It just feels like there's less bleeding because maybe I'm more control. Um, also in clonic volvulus, when there's a, a size discrepancy, um, significantly uh, you know, muscul muscular hypertrophy on the proximal limb compared to the distal, and then also in the inflammatory bowel disease, anastomosis, uh, again, better tissue matchup. Um, and then again, uh, low pelvic anastomosis, when there's really nothing else to staple to, you do have to just sew the colon to the sphincter muscle sometimes. So let's pare it down a bit. Uh, let's just talk about the right colon and a stapled anastomosis. But then you have all of these options, linear, isoperistaltic, antiperistaltic. Uh, do you do a combination with a linear cutter and the TA stapler approximate? Do you use a circular stapler? And I'll show you some of the anatomy of some of these things are, are foreign to you, because they certainly were to me when I started this. And then uh, more recently, and Barry Selke would say not so recently, but uh, intracorporeal versus extracorporeal. So uh, I had a bit of time on my flight up here, so instead of trying to use staples and, and worry about um, uh, uh, you know, being proactive or selling other things, I'm just gonna schematically show everything for you. So. The way I was taught is to, you know, an enterotomy and a clotomy, uh, put your linear stapler through each end, make your anastomosis, and then basically divide your bowel completing the anastomosis and also excluding that entero and clotomy area. Uh, it takes two firings of a linear cutter, uh, so it's relatively easy for your OR staff and uh, depending on your stapler use, relatively inexpensive as well. Uh, so isoperistaltic, uh, that's something that's become um, more uh, talked about and more of interest recently. Uh, I think more in small intestine has it been, you know, functionally evaluated. Uh, we're still waiting to hear. Uh, so again, you're going to transect, tr transect, uh, pass off your pathology specimen, you're going to flip your ileum, and then create an enterotomy and a clotomy, fuse your colon and ileum together, uh, and then you, there's usually a common uh, defect, which you can either over sew, some people will staple, I just can never get the staple to line up. A barb suture seems to make this faster, um, and there's no uh, difference in the outcomes as far as uh, complications. So, now let's talk about end to side. So this is where that circular stapler comes in. You can either staple this or cut, so if you're going to uh, use your resources wisely, you would be cutting this, that's why the arrows are red instead of blue now. Pass off your pathology specimen, uh, anchor the anvil into your ileum uh, with a purse strings uh, approach, and then your circular stapler goes through the opening in your colon, uh, making sure that uh, you're not too close to your final divided edge and leave a nice bridge of healthy colon there. And then you would staple off your end. Uh, and uh, people who favor this tend to say it mimics or replicates the uh, terminal ileum colon junction or ileocecal valve um, and is more anatomic. So when we're looking at all of these options, um, you, can say, you can see 
side-to-side -side linear fashion versus the circular stapler, how many staples are used or required, how many staple firings are usually required, um, and whether or not there's a common enterocolotomy closure that's needed. So intracorporeal anastomosis, I'm gonna tee it up for Dr. Franklin here a little bit. Um, so it's been done for several years. When I was in training, Dr. Selke came and, and gave his uh, eloquent, eloquent talk about intracorporeal anastomosis. And, and quite frankly, I thought, my goodness, you're turning a very straightforward operation into a very complicated one. What are we doing here? Um, but there's actually more and more interest. Um, there's even a, there's two meta-analyses now. There's more recent one with a few um, other studies, but uh, we'll just focus on this one to start. One, pros one prospect of the others are all retrospective studies. Um, you'll see that there's almost 1,500 cases in this meta-analysis and a fair um, sampling of both approaches. Uh, you can see here that even the largest study was only, you know, just shy of 300 and it was a retrospective study. The prospective one uh, was only 40 in each group, uh, so relatively small numbers here. Uh, but when they did their meta-analysis, uh, the uh, intracorporeal anastomosis is on the screen right, and the extracorporeal is on the left, and you can see um, as far as mortality, there's no difference, slight favor towards intracorporeal. Again, short-term morbidity, uh, slight uh, favor towards intracorporeal. And length of stay, favor of intracorporeal. Uh, surgical site infection. The extraction to incision is usually a fan and steel rather than a periumbilical. So a significant decrease was noted here, and there was no difference in ileus or leak rate. So this group concluded that intracorporeal anastomosis is associated with reduced short-term morbidity and reduced length of stay, suggesting earlier recovery. Uh, another group uh, looked at the surgical stress response. Can we, can we relay that we're causing less stress, or at least the body is sensing less stress with an intracorporeal versus an extracorporeal anastomosis? 60 patients were included in the study. They were randomized, either intracorporeal or extracorporeal anastomosis. Um, and they measured a variety of stress surgical response um, values, interleukin-6, CRP, procalcitonin, and then some others uh, just to make sure that the anastomosis didn't leak from uh, malnutrition or other um, uh, underlying diseases. So they measured these at post-op day one, three, and five. Um, and what they noted is uh, that IL-6 and CRP were lower in the intracorporeal group on these days compared to the extracorporeal group and attributed the earlier recovery uh, to a lower surgical stress response. Um, but again, is it the extraction site that's the difference? Is it the fact that we're creating a anastomosis potentially on less tension when we're intracorporeal? Um, is it the pneumoperitoneum or the pressure? Uh, does that have, play a role? Um, we don't know. Um, and it's, it can be quite confusing. Uh, and where do you start? So I was looking back, um, and in 2015 I was asked to give a similar talk um, and this is what my slide looked like in 2015. And at this point, I was not buying into even thinking about intracorporeal anastomosis. Um, the main um, hurdle for me was I'm still trying to teach my, my residents laparoscopic right colons, and you want me to add this to the level? That's going to be another case where I'm going to have to learn, potentially take some cases away in the learning period. Um, but as I left, um, I started thinking, are these downsides really legitimate? Um, what's really stopping you from investigating intracorporeal anastomosis? So today, um, I can say that I, I am performing it. Um, I do uh, observe an earlier return of bowel function, reduced length of stay. Uh, the majority of my patients are going home the next day, which I never thought was going to be possible for a right colon. Um, the downsides uh, that I feared, the residents are actually really good at this, uh, or better than you would anticipate. Um, and uh, it gives them a sense of um, really pushing the envelope and the needle forward in the, in the area of minimally invasive surgery. So I think overall, the data is not telling us one way or the other which is best yet. Um, your anastomotic um, creation principles still trump anything else as far as reconstruction anatomy at this point in time. Um, reconstruction anatomy may play a role even in the right colon for functional outcomes. 
um, and then uh, also potentially uh, making future endoscopy uh, and therapeutic endoscopy um, easier than our typical side-to-side -side functional end. So who will you follow? That's the question. Thank you for your time.